Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to Always Watching, or in this case, Always Listening, a podcast for topics I just honestly don't feel like doing a video for. So I watched the finale of Love is Blind, and I don't know why I keep watching this show. We've proven long ago that love is not blind. Any couple that finds love is not because of the show, it's despite the show. The episode starts off and Jimmy finally cuts it off with Chelsea, and I have never seen a man so indifferent and so exhausted in my entire life. And I was wondering why he didn't take the out in the last episode because they needed content for this episode. And Jimmy basically calls her out saying, you crossed my boundaries. You've basically been pushing me this entire time. And it's not a one time thing. He basically tells her, listen, our dynamic is toxic. I have to end it. And Chelsea tries her best to negotiate with him. And she is throwing a fit. And he just, he is sitting there just waiting for it to be over. And I'm happy he told her before the altar. Because she would have gone carry on him. The edit was pretty savage. Like Chelsea, the more time we spent with Chelsea, the less I liked her. I don't think she's a bad person, but I think she's very insecure. I think, I wonder what the effect the psychological effect is not just with the pods but being surrounded by women and men that are all basically dating the same people i think chelsea's insecure but this type of show probably made her more insecure because the only reason she wanted jimmy is because somebody else that she perceived as more attractive than her wanted him and i wonder how being with all those women kind of affected her because there is something to be said about jealousy and comparing yourself to other women which is normal but not to the extent that it should influence your decision and jimmy this whole season i think i i never thought he was going to go through with it i i thought that he was hoping she would say no but at a certain point i think he was looking for a clear out so he didn't look like the bad guy and Chelsea gave him that out. Like, she has a lot of issues. She has an alcoholism problem. She she just, she just doesn't really respect herself enough. And watching her just basically try to fight for a man that she knew this whole time deep down didn't like her was a bit jarring to me. Jimmy, on the other hand... Again, I wonder what the psychological effect of these pods are because as soon as they see each other, they know that they're not going to go through with it. Now, whether or not that's production pushing them to kind of continue the show, like, I, I never understand why they just don't tell the other person, hey, you know what, I'm not that into you. I know it's rude to look at someone for the first time and tell them, like, I don't like you. But 90% of the time, that seems to be the case. I think... A lot of the people that go on the show go on there for clout. So they probably think, let me just stick this out till I find a way out. But anyways, that relationship burned to the ground. And I love how Netflix never came back to it. Like it was a savage edit. Seems like the show was just as done with them as we, the audience was. The episode starts and we only have two couples left. Starting with Clay and AD. I wasn't sure what was going to happen here. I had my reservations. I thought worst case scenario, they would say yes at the altar and maybe at the reunion, we would be told that they were no longer together. Instead, we got a full no. And so before the altar, we meet Clay and AD's family. And AD is clearly ready to get married and she has made it clear that she is willing to say yes. She has a beautiful dress on and she is just, she seems very sure of her decision and also of Clay's decision. Clay, right before the altar, seems nervous. I have never seen a man just speak his thoughts out loud. Like, everything Clay has been communicating to us this whole season is that he's not a man who's ready to be married. And Clay not only tells us how he feels, but he also tells us a lot about his family and the dysfunctional relationship between his mother and father that has really, that has really affected his perception of marriage. And we meet his father for the first time and like father, like son. His father is just, he, he's also a talker 
and you got the sense like they didn't really feel like father and son you just got the sense that clay was a bit nervous around his father and he didn't feel comfortable maybe voicing a lot of the thoughts in his head there's a lot that clay wants to say to his dad but i, I don't think he he feels again comfortable talking to him about these things Clay's father from what clay tells us he wasn't that great of a husband to the point that he would repeatedly cheat on his mother and take clay with him on these cheating trips this is something that he struggled with because clay has told us time and time again that he's not sure he can stay faithful he has this idea of marriage as painful like something that you have to stick it out and i think he believes that because he's a, he's a certain age it's like a box he wants to check like oh I guess it's time for me to get married now but he's just not emotionally ready but that has to do with i think the way he grew up and i really wish that clay had told her before the altar i mean he, he'd he been screaming at her this whole time basically saying i'm not ready and i thought the most telling conversation was when he told her in the last episode that is it okay if we basically f prolong if we prolong this engagement. And I think when she told him that I'm not willing to be a fiance for a long time and I'm okay with a no at the altar, it's kind of when he made his decision because he was not ready to get, he, he was not ready to get married at that moment. This whole wedding scene between Clay and AD was one of the most chaotic scenes I have seen in a long time. Like there was a lot going on. There was drama, the reactions, like it was so, I have to watch it again, but I'm like, this is just crazy. Their vows didn't really make any sense to me. The way Clay was looking at her, I was like, sir, why are you smiling in her face when you're about to say no? Moment of truth comes and AD says yes, and Clay says no. And the way he tried to play it off, like, you know, I need some work, but I'm willing to work with you. I just thought her reaction pretty much said it all. She was just like, w is this real life? Is this really what I'm going through? That's something that really was triggering to me. He's like, why, why are these timelines a big deal? And people always talk about right person, wrong time, but I don't think timing has anything to do with it. I think there's a right person for you, like at a certain time. And he is just, it doesn't matter who the person is. He's not ready. And all this work that he says he's going to do on himself, all this, it's just, he was really trying to lessen the blow. And you can tell she's heartbroken. The reaction from everybody in the crowd was pretty much our reaction. We were disappointed, but not surprised. Clay's honesty did surprise me. He basically admits that not only does he not feel like he's a husband, he's not deeply in love with her. And he says it like it's like that, like it is what it is. Also made a comment about her finances, which I didn't really understand. Like, y'all never talked about finances? Because sometimes I'm not sure how the show is edited. Like, I'm assuming they have conversations like this off camera. Are they saying that this whole time they never once talked about finances? They never, they never talked about whose house they're going to live in or where they're going to move to? Like, I, I found that to be a bit shady when he was like, I don't know anything about her finances, as if... I don't know, like I felt like there was a dig in there somewhere. There's a difference between saying I'm not in love with you to like I don't know anything about your fight. I feel like he threw that in there as a... I'm not even sure what. You guys let me know what you think about the finances comment because I thought that was weird. He then tries to make all these promises about working with her and trying to become a better person but all of it is for the camera. But the best moment of this entire episode was the conversation between clay's mom and dad and i thought this was just this this was a moment that i think we all needed his mother margarita tells us that there's a lot she found out during this process and their marriage was not the best marriage it had a lot of ups and downs but it seems like she discovered things that really just shocked her i love the way that she puts her ex-husband Trevor in his place because he's a talker. Basically says, listen, the reason he went through with this is because he obviously wants to be in a long-term relationship, but his perception of marriage has been corrupted. And although we come from broken homes, we don't have to pass that brokenness on to our children. And I just thought that was like so perfect because 
at the end of the day, we we copy our parents, right? Like we like that's why they say patterns often repeat themselves. Like people end up kind of recreating the same cycles they're trying to escape from. There was a moment where Clay's dad tried to play it off like I hope he finds a woman like you. And she looks at him like you met me, but you weren't good to me. And she just shuts him up like sir, I am not here for you. Like this is not for the cameras. She tells him basically like he, like not today. And I just love that moment because being a good husband or being a good spouse or partner, it takes effort. And there's only so much you can do if the person you're working with is not willing to meet you halfway. Like you could sacrifice yourself all you want. You can put your all. The other person is not doing their part. It's pointless. You're beating a dead horse. And that moment was it for me. And I think Clay, that was probably the best moment. Going back to Clay and AD, like AD has a comment like, I'm never enough. I think a part of being ready for marriage is also recognizing if the other person you want to be with is ready for marriage. Again, nothing about Clay suggests that he was ever going to be a stable husband. And so to save face, Clay's... And he's still playing in our face. Like, I just... Like, if you're going to go, go. You know, he's trying to kiss her. He's trying to console her. But she is just like, I am done <laughs> with you, sir. Like, it was just so awkward. He looked like he was ready to move on. And I would be curious to know during the reunion if he did actually end up going to therapy. If he did actually follow through on the things that he said he was going to do. Because everything about Clay... I'm not going to lie. I just felt like he was there for the cameras after a certain point. He seemed friendly enough that I don't know why he just wouldn't tell her off camera. So cringe. Like anyone going on this show, if you don't want to be with someone, don't make them wear the dress. Chelsea's crying, but she ain't crying in a wedding dress. I think Clay and AD are, you know, they're a very interesting couple because I don't think this show was for Clay. And in terms of AD, I actually don't think she was here for the cameras. Like, I think had Matthew worked out, she would have been down. Because even in the pods, she was very clear that she was here for the experience. And I think she was hoping to meet somebody that she normally would not have met in her everyday life. For a moment, it did seem like she met that person. Like, she was here for a very specific experience. In the end, she met Clay. And Clay is a guy she could have met outside of Love is Blind. This is, the ty this is her type, she said. This is the type of person I would date. Part of her is also disappointed because she went through this experience hoping to find something new but falling into old patterns. It's something that she has to investigate. Clay's concern, he came on the show. Uh, yeah, he came on the show. I think some part of him maybe wanted it to work out. And when he realized it wouldn't, he just kind of kept it going you guys let me know what you think i have to re-watch that whole scene because it was so chaotic in terms of amy and johnny i don't really have a lot of notes for them like they they worked out i thought meeting johnny's parents was really interesting like his dad just looked really skeptical <laughs> like i don't know his parents look like characters to me and i'm not sure about amy and johnny like it's going to be interesting to see at the reunion if they worked out because he has said time and time again that he wants to save for retirement he wants to be frugal and amy has said she wants a family like i remember one episode where amy was like you know even if we had children it wouldn't really be ideal but we could probably do it i think although they are very compatible their goals and how they see their life post-marriage is very different. And I'm not sure how long Amy is willing to wait to have children because it seems like she's ready and Johnny is not. This whole thing about birth control, like they keep coming back to it for some reason. And the vibe I get from Johnny is that he, he doesn't want kids anytime soon. He doesn't want a family anytime soon. And she looks like she's ready for it. So that's the only, like I, I kind of wonder if they'll still be together at the reunion or what the update will be um i hope i wish them the best i think again they're very compatible there's not a lot to say i'm from good homes but yeah i don't know you guys let me know what you think what you think the update will be on them on the reunion overall i thought it was very chaotic at this point love is blind has just become entertainment like 
love is not blind we've already seen that you know the show pretty much wins if it gets one couple to say yes like the standard is so low at this point that we're just here for the drama. We're just here for the tea. I'd be interested to see what happens at the reunion and who shows up to the reunion. Just let me know what you think and until next time.